your purchaser takes over your business and bars you from physical access to it and from the financials of the business. What do you do? Today on the Entrepreneur Advisor, we're going to talk about emergency injunctions. Let's go. Hello, my name is Stephen Mallitz and this is the Entrepreneur Advisor. Today we're going to talk about emergency injunctions. They're filing an injunction. A what? An injunction is a court order restraining conduct or requiring conduct. But when you go to court, you have to prove the elements to the judge, the standards. You've worked for years and years to build up your business. And now you have a purchaser and you have an agreement. But before the closing, your purchaser takes over your business and bars you from physical access to it and from the financials of the business. What do you do? He has stolen your business. He will rue the very day he stole my kingdom from me. So let's talk about those elements. In our business case, where the purchaser is taking control of our business and not paid for it, we need a protectable right, a hook to get into court. Well, our hook is the contract, is the asset purchase agreement by which we are going to sell and the purchaser is going to buy and pay for our business. Here, the purchaser didn't pay, he just took control of the business and barred us from access. The next element, is there irreparable harm? Is there an emergency? Well, sure there is. This is a business you've worked on and your purchaser is taking control and not paid for it. And he's not letting you come into the business. That's an emergency. That could bring down the asset entirely. Next, is there an adequate remedy at law? Can money solve this problem? Well, maybe ultimately money could solve the problem, but for right now, while we decide who owns the business and while we decide when the closing is going to occur, you need access to the business. You need physical access, you need the ability to walk in, and you need the ability to see the financials of the business. Courts will be convened. So we went to court having a likelihood of success on the merits based on our contract, based on the emergency, based on the fact that we need to see our financials and the judge gave us our emergency injunction and also required that the closing occur in his chambers under his watchful eye to ensure the purchaser would sign the documents and would pay for the business. The most common form of emergency injunction in the business context is in the restrictive covenant agreement context. You have a high level employee. He or she signs the agreement with you, promising that they won't solicit customers of the business while they're employed and upon their departure. Well, here, the employee leaves and begins pilfering the customers. It was wrong of you to steal my customer away from me. What do you do? You seek an emergency injunction based on that agreement. Let's hit the elements. Protectable right. Sure, there's a protectable right. There's an employment agreement where the employee is promised not to pill for the customers. Next, is there an emergency? Is there irreparable harm? Absolutely. If the employee steals the customers, there won't be any business left. Next, is there an adequate remedy at law in the emergency context? Not really. The employee hasn't contracted to purchase the business, and right now you need to protect your client base. There's no money in the world that could save your business and that business is unique to you. So you go to court, you seek your injunction and you have a likelihood of success based on the employment agreement, based on all the irreparable harm that it's caused me. And based on the fact that the employee is not going to pay you and you need access to your own customers. Here's an example of a case where injunctive relief would fail. Two individuals own a restaurant. There's a chef and there's an investor. The name of the restaurant consists of their last names rolled in together. They decide they can't do business with one another and the investor is going to leave. But the investor says, well, wait a minute, you can't use my last name for the business. That's my name. And the investor seeks an emergency injunction to change the menu, the marketing collateral, even the signage in the restaurant. Well, in that case, an injunction on an emergency basis is going to be denied. A judge is not going to make the restaurant 
change all of this information, change the name, the business will fail while this occurs. Today we've covered the elements of an emergency injunction. We've talked about protectable right, your hook to get into court, irreparable harm, what's the emergency that's necessary, whether there's an adequate remedy at law where money could solve the dispute, and whether there's a likelihood of success on the merits based on the evidence that you've submitted to the judge. An emergency injunction is a very powerful tool in your legal arsenal. If you have any questions about injunctions, please let me know. Thank you. If you have found this material useful and entertaining, please share it, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications of future episodes. Also, please take a look at the playlist for prior episodes. Thank you for watching The Entrepreneur Advisor.